good morning my dear students so we are after good morning my dear students so after a very long time we are again back into the online mode of uh, education right so as you all know that global uh, coronavirus and omicron variant is going outside just outside our home so we need to stay back as per the government protocol so today we will be studying about a new chapter which is known as skeleton or uh, chapter number 12 that is skeleton movement and locomotion okay so uh, i at the first of the beginning of the like video tutorial i want to tell you all that this chapter here you need to learn okay I'll be giving you the points, I'll be marking the points you need to learn. See, always on all the chapter I tell you that learn conceptually. Okay, right. Isn't it? I tell all of you that learn conceptually. But this is a chapter where you will find that you need to actually learn more than understanding. Okay, because this chapter is just like that. Anyway, uh, we will be starting with this chapter. So, first the thing that comes in our mind is the skeleton system. So, all of us have uh, at least in picture have seen what or how a skeleton look like right <coughs> so particularly a skeleton is made up of bones right so bones are joined together to form to give a structure of our human body and it is the skeleton on which the muscles are attached and then the organs then the skin and we uh, like uh, the structure what we see is being formed right so, uh, open page number 117, chapter number 12, skeleton movement and locomotion. Most animals are characteristics by definite shape and the capacity to move of the different parts of the body. This movement also helps the animal in locomotive, that is movement from one place to another. The functions are performed by skeleton and the muscles together. So, one thing that you need to, before going uh, in detail with the chapter, you need to understand is, like the first one is the what is movement and what is locomotion see movement is i am moving my hand okay without displacement so this is known as movement but when i am just like moving from my own place it is known as locomotion okay so function of human skeleton what are the function of human skeleton the skeleton in our body serves six main purposes what are they first is support and shape the skeleton provides a support or framework to all the soft part and gives the body and its part a definite shape so, so definitely if suppose uh, like can you tell me one uh, animal or organism or a reptile which do not have a skeleton system snake right so suppose we are the human beings who do not have any skeletal system then what would have happened then it was it is not possible for us to stand straight okay second one is protection Several dedicated and important organs are well protected by casing of bones. Definitely it acts as protection. Then movement. Many bones are joined to each other in a manner that one bone can be moved on another. So this you will learn later in this chapter. There are several joints, gliding joints, how one bone is moving on another bone. Now leverage. Yes, uh, I hope that you all un, uh, remembered that the levers. There are three levers first class lever second class lever and type 3 or class 3 lever right so it acts as a lever formation of blood cells okay now rbcs are formed uh, in the bone marrow okay so see certain types of blood cells including red and white blood cells are formed in the tissue of the central hollow space or the marrow of some of the long bones such as fumar okay now the bones are a storehouse of calcium and phosphorus for the rest of the body now the constituents of skeleton our skeleton consists of bones cartilage and ligaments okay so these are the three main constituents now bones bones compromise the uh, comprise the heart framework of the body cartilages are the supporting and connecting structure for example the cartilage supporting and projecting external ear and the tip of the nose okay this nose this is actually not bone but this is the tip of the bone is the cartilage okay now ligaments binds the bone together now see what are the types of bones here we find four types of bones what are they long bone short bone flat bone and irregular bones now bones bones is a chief component of our skeleton it consists of organic and inorganic material 
The inorganic part constitutes nearly two thirds of the entire bone substance and includes mainly the compounds of calcium and phosphorus. If a bone is placed in a weak hydrochloric acid, the mineral part is removed from it or get dissolved and the remaining organic framework is left behind. Such a bone is called decalcified bone. Okay, from where the calcium part is removed is known as decalcified bone. And it is soft and flexible which can never be tied into a knot. On the other hand, if a bone is strongly heated, its organic matter is destroyed or oxidized and only the mineral part or ash will remain. Such a bone turns brittle and quickly breaks. With age, in, uh, as in old people, the organic part of the bone is reduced and the bone becomes more fragile, taking much time in rejoining after a fracture. So, as uh, we are aging, oxidizing is also taking place, so this thing happen. Okay. Now, classification of bone on basis of shape. So, how can we classify bone in the basis of shape? See. Shape wise, bones are classified into long, short, fat and irregular bones. Okay. Now, as we can understand by the name long, suppose, uh, definitely the long bones will be longer, longer ones, short will be short, flat and irregular. The structure of a typical bone, example thigh bone is shown in figure 12.2, sorry 12.1. It is highly calcified, mineralized, hard and rigid connective tissue. It is very strong and can withstand. Uh, we stand severe stress. It consists of bone cells arranged in the form of concentric rings embedded in a ground matrix in which collagen fiber and mineral salts are deposited. The external surface of the bone is covered by a membrane called periostrum. Now, underline this periostrum. As I already told that you need to learn a lot from this chapter. Which consists of outer fibrous and inner cellul uh, cellular layer and rigidly supplied with the blood vessel. A long bone has a hollow cavity in the middle which is filled with bone marrow okay so in our bone inside the bone there is bone marrow marrow is of two types yellow marrow made up of adipose tissue and blood vessels which gives rise to the white blood cell and red marrow which is present at the end and produce red blood cell clear now coming to human skeletal see figure 12.2 okay this is a skeleton of you all so <laughs> see here the human skeleton altogether consists of 206 bones including very three tiny bone in each ear. Okay, these are the smallest bone. Table 12.1 gives a detailed region wise breakup of the total number of bones in human skeleton. The skeleton has two main division. What are they? The first one is the axial division and another one is the appendicular division or appendicular skeleton. Okay. The axial skeleton which includes a basic central framework of the body and the appendicular skeleton which includes the bones of the limbs and griddles. Now coming to axial skeleton, what does it consist of? It consists of the skull, the vertebral column, the ribs and the sternum. Okay, a skull. A skull is a skeleton of the head. It contains two parts. The upper top part of the cranium or the brain box is made up of eight bones which are so joined to each other that they are permanently fixed. The other part of the skull forms the face which contains a total of 14 bones. Okay, 8 bones are here and 14 bones are here. The upper and the lower jaws are also formed by some of these bones. The back part of the cranium contains a large hole or the foramen magnum through which the spinal cord after emerging from the brain continues behind the backbone. So here is the hole. Now, the B, second part is vertebral column. The vertebral or spinal column is popularly called the backbone. It is composed of a total of 33 individual or 26 when fused ring like bones called vertebrae. These are divided into 5 groups according to the region they occupy. The neck region has 7 cervical vertebrae, then there are 12 thoracic, 5 lumbar, 5 sacrum, and 4 coccyx. Okay, you need to learn and remember all of this. The vertebral column is curved to maintain the balance of the body in an erect position. The curve absorbs pressure and shock while walking, running and protects the column from breaking. Now, suppose our uh, vertebral column is straight, then what happens? When a particular load is up on the head or on the uh, from the below, it will crack the bone. Okay, that is the reason it is slightly bent. Now, structure of vertebra. Each vertebra is somewhat ring-like structure. Its lower part 
is formed of a solid cylinder of bone called centrum or the body of vertebra. The two opposite ends of the centrum are flat. On the dorsal back side of the centrum is canal or the neural canal formed by the union of two neural arches arising from the side of the centrum. In natural position, the spinal cord runs throughout the neural canal. Neural spine is a flat longitudinal rigid projection upward from the meeting point of the two neural arches. Transverse processes are thick sideward projection from the neural arches. The neural arch also bear articular facets, one in the front and one behind on either side, which helps in joining the two vertebra one behind the other. A pad of cartilage, invertible disc or gristle form a kind of cushion between two vertebrae. Okay, now this I know is very complex. You will say that how will we remember this? But there is no other option. You need to learn this. You need to remember this. Okay. Now neck or the uh, cervical vertebrae. The first cervical vertebrae also called is called the atlas. The second vertebrae is the axis. The remaining five neck vertebrae do not have any special name. And thank God that you don't have to unlearn that. Now thoracic vertebrae have long neural spine which are directed backward. Each of the transverse process bears on its extremity a facet or articulation with the tuber leg of the rib. Now lumbar vertebrae have well developed neural spines and transverse process which serves for the attachment of powerful back muscle. Sacrum. Sacrum is a large bone formed by fusion of five vertebrae. To it are articulated the hip bone on the either side. Okay. Now coccyx. Coccyx is the last part of the backbone. It is made up of four fused vertebrae which represent the rudimentary tail of the human body. Rudimentary tail means that we all know that we have a tail like projection of bone in our back. Okay. So it has been believed that these tail came from our uh, ancient apes. It is known as rudimentary tail. Okay, sometimes babies are born with a small tail, which the doctor usually remove. Okay, a uh, 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 photograph is given. Now, sternum. The sternum of the breast bone is a long flat bone lying in the middle of the front part of the chest. Ribs. There are 12 pairs of ribs, which along with the thoracic vertebrae and the sternum back uh, breast bone constitute the bony cage or rib cage. Okay, these constitute of the particular rib cage. The first seven pair of the ribs or the true ribs are attached in front to the sternum with the help of hyaline cartilage. Uh, cartilage. The eighth, ninth and the tenth pair of the ribs do not articulate directly into the sternum but joins the seventh rib with the help of hyaline cartilage. The last two, eleventh, twelfth, eleventh and twelfth pair of the ribs are not attached to the sternum and are therefore known as floating ribs. So you will see the diagram 12.4 uh, here you will get it. See? Here you will get it. Okay. Now coming to appendicular skeleton or the bones of the limbs and girdles. Bones of the limbs, bones of the forelimbs and the hind limbs largely correspond to each other. The forelimb consists of single long bone humerus in the upper arm, two long bones in the lower arm, the radius on the side of the thumb and the ulna. Eight carpus or roost bones in the wrist. 5 metacarpus in the palm and 14 phalanges and 14 phalanges 2 in thumb 3 in each of the remaining 4 fingers you need to I am repeatedly telling you need to learn this thoroughly the hind limb consists of long bones humor in the thigh which is the longest and strongest bone of the body ok so humor is the longest and strongest bone in the body 2 long bone the inner tibia and the outer fibula in the shank, 7 tarsal bones in ankle, 5 long metacarpal bone in the middle of the foot and 14 phalanges just as those of the finger that is 2 greater in toe and 3 in each uh, in the other foot toes. The hind limb have an additional bone called patella or kneecap which is joined to the lower end of the femur. Kneecap is a bone developed from the tendon. Okay, a kneecap what happens when our knee moves this particular kneecap acts as a, a protection in front of our knee. Now coming to griddles. Griddles are the parts of skeleton which helps to articulate the limb bone to the main axial skeleton. There are two griddle, shoulder griddle and hip griddle. 
here is one griddle and in our shoulder uh, in our hip there is another griddle the shoulder of the pectoral griddle consists of two flat triangular shoulder blade which lies dorsally on the upper rib on either side of the vertebral column in the thorax region its outer apex bears a large somewhat cup like glenoid cavity which fits into the rounded upper head of the humerus and close to the, this joint the shoulder blade has a small raised part to which the long and the curved collarbone is attached clear the other end of the collarbone is joined to the uppermost part of the sternum here the hip of the pelvic griddle is a large trough shaped part formed by two hip bones that are joined medially to the sacrum each hip bone is made up of three fused bone the ilium the ischium and the pubis on each side it bears a large cup shaped articular cavity into which it fits large round head of the thigh bone the hip griddle not only gives support to the skeleton of the hind limb but also protects and supports the abdominal organ clear so difference between male and female uh, skeleton male skeleton is generally larger and heavier in the female skeleton the pelvis or hip bone is wider and trough shaped to adapt the accommodation of fortes in the uterus during pregnancy so whatever i have learned uh, taught you is represented in this particular table 12.1 see you need to learn this part as well and the table as well okay the next class we will be continuing with the joints i do understand this chapter is a bit boring and you have to learn learn learn, learn and that there is nothing as such to understand but yet it is the most important chapter for your icc as well so study this chapter hard we'll be continuing in the next class with the joints take care of yourself take care of your family stay hope stay safe stay happy we'll be meeting in the next class thank you